Hi everyone, welcome again to Criminoli. Today I want to talk about one of my favourite horror authors uh, and one you don't see um, referenced in the horror community much anymore and that is Sean Hudson. <coughs> so Hudson's a, a British horror writer who um, started out in the early 80s very much in, in the kind of wake of James Herbert who gave the um, the British horror scene the, the kick up the arse it needed in the early 70s um, and made it a you know very viable business proposition. Um, so Hudson wrote books initially very much in the Herbert vein so obviously Herbert's you know big first big hit was or first book indeed was The Rats um, which spawned at least three sequels um, so Hudson started out with his, his take on Nature Gone Amok, uh, which is Slugs, um, which is a, an absolutely disgusting book, um, as the cover would suggest. Um, there's a sequel to that, as there was to The Rats, so the sequel to that is Breeding Ground, uh, which isn't quite as good, I have to say, but still pretty good. And why I think Hudson is interesting is because he writes in a style which feels akin to a kind of splatterpunk, um, seen in the States and, and also, you know, more recently, the extreme horror scene. Um, so he's not normally associated with those subgenres, I don't think. Uh, I think perhaps part of the reason for that is his books are a bit more conservative in some respects than um, the splatterpunk novels. So, um, you know, whereas someone like uh, Clive Barker you know, his books are quite transgressive in, in a number of ways and, and often feature quite diverse characters. Um, Hudson writes much more about, you know, your kind of early middle-aged white hero type character. So, you know, his his protagonists are often cops. Um, they pretty much always smoke. Um, so smoking is a, is a big part of Hudson's novels. Um, and they are, you know, generally speaking, trying to do the right thing. So it hasn't quite got that punk ethos that um, that splatterpunk books have. So Hudson is someone who, at the end of his books, often thanks lots of people who've been involved in their production. So, you know, people from his publishers and things like that. And also talks about his influences. Um, and whereas a lot of writers would, would mention other writers when they're talking about their influences, Hudson typically writes about either heavy metal bands um, or movie directors, in particular Sam Peckinpah. Um, and certainly, you know, a lot of the kind of cinematic violence and, and the, the action type violence that's more prevalent in some of his later novels um, certainly, you know, does feel like the kind of thing you would see in a Peckinpah film. Um, Speaking about the, the heavy metal influence as well, it's probably worth noting that certainly in the 80s, uh, Sean Hudson had the, the most incredible hair of any horror writer, um, I think, ever. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put up a picture of that so you can appreciate it. So let me give you some examples of the kind of things he writes about. So, so slugs, obviously, is about killer slugs. Not only that, but they infect people with... Um, a bacteria which sends them insane. So uh, apart from the fact you've got slow-moving slugs eating people, you've also got people killing each other. Um, Spawn, so this was another early book from Hudson. Um, so this is around um, someone who manages to bring abortions back to life um, and turn them into little creatures who do his bidding, um, which you can see on the cover there. So. Even the concept of that one is quite horrible. Um, in in later years, so in kind of the late 90s, Hudson turned more to writing, um, I guess what you call crime fiction rather than horror fiction, although it's still really, really horrible. Um, so an example of that would be something like this, Deadhead, um, which is one of his most troubling books, probably, which is about someone who's investigating um, a series of dis disappearances of teenagers. Um, it turns out the reason they've disappeared um, is because they've been the star stars of snuff films. Um, so a lot of his stuff is is quite extreme in that respect. And another one, another book of his, Nemesis. This is a bit of a spoiler, but forgive me. So so Nemesis is about a woman. It's a bit like a a low rent rip off of Rosemary's Baby, really. So it's about a woman who gets pregnant with a monster effectively um, and it ends with um, well, there's there's a scene in it where the woman is raped and the monster fetus inside her rips off 
um, her rapist's penis <laughs> while she's raping her. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of thing that Hudson is into. Um, so yeah, quite horrible, but always quite entertaining as well. So he writes with a real um, energy. Um, he, he claims that some of his early books were written in a weekend, um, which, you know, they're quite short and they're certainly not deep. So I, I don't suspect that he's exaggerating too much um, when he says that. Um, he's written dozens of books. My Hudson collection is a lot smaller than it used to be. I was really into his stuff when I was a teenager. Um, but it's, you know, he's well worth checking out and he's somebody who just, you don't really hear talked about. So people are starting, I think, in the, uh, the, the kind of worldwide horror community to talk more about writers like James Herbert and Ramsey Campbell and people like that from the UK. Hudson is one who seems to have fallen by the radar um, a bit. Another, another book that's worth checking out if you can find it, particularly if you're a film fan, um, is his novelisation of The Terminator. So in the UK, um, Hudson wrote a novelisation of it because the um, the UK publishers who had the rights wanted to get something out quickly um, and the American novelisation was taking too, too long. Um, so there's a different novelisation of Terminator in the UK which as you'd expect from Hudson is much more gory and violent and, and I think much better than the rather dry American novelisation. James Cameron apparently hates the short Hudson book um, which probably doesn't surprise me. The other thing uh, quickly for me to talk about is this book, The Notorious Chainsaw Terror, um, which Hudson wrote under the pseudonym of Nick Blake in the early 80s. So the, the backstory to this apparently is that um, the publisher had the right to do a novelisation of A Texas Chainsaw Massacre and hired Hudson to do that. There was some sort of legal problem um, and um, the deal kind of vanished, but they decided that they wanted Hudson to write a chainsaw book anyway, um, and hence Chainsaw Terror was born. Um, <clears throat> what then happened, by the sound of it, was a, an appeal from various pressure groups um, to get the book off the shelves because it was so horrific. Um, and the publishers eventually took it out of print and, and supposedly um, copies were pulled off the shelves. Now. This is where the story gets a bit vague. Now, Hudson certainly in interviews has claimed that the publishers then um, got him to, or got someone to censor the book, so to take out the most violent scenes, and it was then reissued under the title Come the Night. Um, so I also have a copy of Come the Night, and I've compared the two books, um, and I believe that they are identical. So I think the, the concept or the idea that Come the Night is a barbarised version of Chainsaw, Chainsaw Terror is um, a myth. Um, I don't think it's true. If you look at the you know, like page numbers, for example, the two books have an identical number of pages um, and you know the words picking a page at random, the, the first word and the last page on the page in each copy will be the same. Um, so whereas Chainsaw Terror goes for uh, you know, quite a bit of money, 50 quid plus, um, on eBay because it's very rare. Come the night you can pick up a bit cheaper and there's also an omnibus edition um, of some of Hudson's books that includes Come the Night and a couple of um, sci-fi books he wrote under a pseudonym which again I've got a copy of it somewhere but I can't find it but that the text in that is identical as well and that you can get for about a fiver. Um, so if you're someone who's keen to read Chainsaw Terror because you've heard about it um, my recommendation would be um, pick up the omnibus edition because it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, the book's not bad. It's it's um it's it, it is extremely gory and quite silly and quite bleak and depressing. Um, but yeah, it's okay. It's about um, about a loner who um, who kills people with a chainsaw basically um, in his soundproof house. Um, there's a there's a an investigative journalist if I remember correctly who's kind of trying to figure out what's going on as well. But yeah, it's it's an interesting and entertaining read. And you know, obviously published under a pseudonym, Hudson also wrote westerns um, and war novels uh, under a pseudonym. The the war novels which are written under the name Wolf Kruger um, are available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, so if you're a fan of of violent war fiction, um, kind of in the in the mould of Wolf Hassel, the Swedish writer, um, then yeah, check out check out. Uh, it's not Wolf Hassel, Sven Hassel, the Swedish writer. Then uh, check out Wolf Kruger, 
um, his Eastern Front books as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that dive into Sean Hudson. Um, if you're a Hudson fan um, already, then uh, you know, please shout in the comments. Um, if you're not and you'd like a recommendation uh, on which one to start with, then let me know. Um, my recommendation probably will be The Slugs, to be honest with you, because it's his first book. Um, and I think one of his most entertaining is just pure B-movie gore from start to finish. Um, but if you if you don't like slugs, then, then let me know and I'll see if I can recommend something else. Um, as always, if you're not a subscriber already and you like this kind of thing, a subscription would be appreciated. Um, and also, if you like the video, hit that like button. Um, and hopefully I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio!